If you've never been to Singapore, you have to be prepared when you come here for the first time. Otherwise, you can get in trouble or even end up in jail. <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Or am I? Okay, from this video, you will know five things that you don't want to do in Singapore from a legal perspective and just from social norms angle. Be careful customizing your car. I have a friend, he is a Singaporean working as a personal trainer in the gym. He loves doing mods for his car. Once he changed the exhaust, <laughs> I guess it was too loud or something. Anyway, he got caught by the police and he received an invitation to the court. So he comes there and the judge says, okay, you have two options. Option one, you pay $2,000 fine or option two, you go to jail for two days. You can choose. What would you choose, by the way? Tell me in the comments below. So my friend choose to pay. Aww. But if I had these two options, I would probably go to jail for two days. It's a lifetime experience. I would tell this story to my daughter when she grows up, though I'm not quite sure if my tattoos are suitable for the prison environment. Don't talk to strangers. People on the street in Singapore don't really like to be disturbed by strangers. Can I ask you a few questions for my YouTube channel? I want to be in my YouTube video for a second. Question. Thank you. If you do it, you'll end up in jail of social awkwardness. Singaporeans don't want to bother each other, so saying hi in the lift is not obligatory. <coughs> there are a few reasons for that. I asked my Singaporean friends and they said when they were kids, they were told by their parents not to talk to strangers, as it's dangerous. So despite Singapore is one of the safest places on earth, Singaporeans still don't talk to strangers, just in case. Another reason is that it's a cultural thing to show respect to others, especially to elders, by allowing them to talk more. It's out of respect for others' time and energy not to be wasted. Last reason is that Singapore is still a metropolis. There are social studies that people are more reserved to strangers in big cities. Except for New York City! New York, New York! But to be honest, of course you can start conversations with strangers. Just be nice and be drunk. Drop your OnlyFans account. OnlyFans is a British-run platform where creators can share photos and videos and subscribers can access their content for a fee. And you can find your favorite porn star account there. In Singapore, you can be charged with posting obscene material on the online platform. So, if you came to Singapore as an influencer, like myself, watch out. Try not to be super naked in your photos and videos. This is okay, and this is okay, but this is not okay. OnlyFans creator Titus Lowe was charged in December 2021 with transmitting obscene material. The 22-year-old was accused of uploading 32 explicit photographs and 29 videos to OnlyFans, but based on his Instagram, he's fine already. Very important fact, OnlyFans is not banned in Singapore. Subscribing to creators and consuming content on OnlyFans is not an offense, so you're safe. Please continue. Don't mess around with your visa. Obtaining a visa to come to Singapore is fairly easy. And that's because people know that they have to leave before visa is expired. Let's compare it to the United States. Getting a tourist visa and crossing the immigration border is harsh. But once you're in the country, there are different ways to stay, even without proper documents. In Singapore, it doesn't work this way. I don't know anyone who would dare to stay here illegally. And I personally know people who did it in the US and Europe. For sure, there are such cases in Singapore as well, but they're pretty rare. There was big news last year that 18 people were arrested for bringing foreigners into Singapore on illegally acquired work passes. Those who hire foreigners seeking illegal employment may be fined up to 30,000 Sing dollars jailed for up to 12 months, or both. Convicted employers will be banned from hiring foreigners. So you don't want to do it either as an individual or as a company. On a side note, MOM, please renew my visa next year, okay? Don't eat and drink in the subway. I mean metro, I mean underground, tube. Oh yes, MRT, the fine is up to 500 sing dollars. The rule was established in 1987. The explanation is that the beverage could spill and wet seats, soil other commuters belongings or cause a fellow commuter to slip and fall. Maybe it feels a bit too much, but honestly, it's not as silly as some people think. I would be super disturbed if someone sitting next to me started eating a burger or so. 
But of course, if you or your kid take a sip of water in a carriage, I don't think you will be reported to the police straight away. I researched if someone actually been fined for this, but in most cases people were just told off uh, to leave a station, finish their food and drink and then come back. My teacher at high school always told me the same when I was trying to eat a bar of Snickers in a classroom. Get out of my goddamn classroom before I break my foot off in your ass! Overall, I think Singapore is not as strict as its reputation. Most of the rules make sense and enforcement is based on common sense. It's funny how my friend visited us in Singapore and we were strolling around Labrador Park and she saw some old uncles fishing just next to a sign that fishing is prohibited. And she was like, what? I thought in Singapore the laws are so strict and Singaporeans are so blindly compliant with all the rules. How come? I think the government is just keeping this reputation for some reason. Conspiracy entered the room. Oh yeah, and the most important thing that you don't want to do in Singapore. You come to a food court, walk around looking for your table, you find one that is not occupied, you see a small tissue back on the table. Hmm, probably someone forgot it. And you just throw it out and take a seat. That's no no behavior here. You know why? Leave a comment below. And see you in a beautiful Singapore.